today, I think. And I'm with Charles. How's it going, man? Going great, man. Yeah. Gonna bring it home tonight. And man, t tonight's MSM is actually something special because this is, I believe this is the first time A18 has come down to OC, right? Uh, I'm in a, at least in a really long while. I don't know, maybe if like the first MSM everyone came down. No, they didn't. They didn't? Okay, then yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think when he came down, he came down. Yeah, because this is a very different winners finals. As you can see, we got Nico, of course, no stranger to being in winners finals, and uh, Sweet Tea, who I think was a little bit of a sleeper. Here oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, everyone for the most part, everyone knows Sweet Tea is really good. But I, I think this is pretty much his very first like breakout performance where he's getting a lot of upsets, and now he's sitting at winners finals of this insanely stacked. MSM. This is probably the most stacked MSM we've had in a very, very, very long time. We're gonna go to things started. We're already getting a decent amount of damage using the Squirtle, getting those early percent combos, and switching to Ivysaur, getting that pivot forward smash. Yeah, and that was only a single hit as well, so the Shield Monado out is not gonna be an option here for Nico. Right back to the Speed Monado, and right back to Squirtle we go. Yeah. Back in Shield Art, gonna let himself get a little bit of a couple wins in neutral. And I really like the Squirtle pick too at the low percent because even though Nico goes into the shield arc, Squirtle just, his attacks are so fast anyway. Oh man, you're dead. Wow, that was such a good switch. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing Sweet Tea getting that a lot today, using that large <laughs> hitbox from that Ivy Sword down here, just catching people drifting towards the ledge and just catching them before they come back. But a pivot force smash to smash art on a light character like Squirtle, yeah. that's gonna go ahead and take it too. You are super dead right there, and um, Sweet Tea will go right back into the Squirtle. We are at the low percentage here, and of course, I mean, we've been seeing that pattern coming out from Sweet Tea, and it's a great strategy. You know what I mean? And I mean, it, I guess it's like definitely uh, the strategy that most Pokemon trainers are opting with. And look at that, even in shield mode, he's still able to like not get reset on. Even though you drop the combo, I think it's a really big deal that you don't get reversal in that situation. Right. So, Ooh, air slash out of shield, he even gets a reverse out of there. It catches up the cross up. Wow, and the water gun actually saved him from getting ledge trapped there. He pushed Nico so far back that he wasn't able to capitalize on the ledge trap. But back to the ledge we go, the off stage is going to go. Not in the favor of Nico, the high recovery comes from Suzuki. Yep. Ooh, the dare just barely does not clip him. Gets a Razor Leaf. He's on the platform though, not able to convert off anything. If he's in the right position, he can get a Razor Leaf or a Vine Whip after afterwards. Oh yeah, and Ivy's are definitely the hardest Pokemon to ledge trap on the team. That ledge drop Vine Whip is such a great tool because it just, if you're shielding it, it pushes you so far back that you can't really capitalize. Sweet Tea trying to get a falling up air there to finish it off while Nico is still in Smash Art. Didn't quite work out there, but still he's got a lot of percent and another stock to work with. Basically overlap, but he's going to get clipped right there. Uh -oh. Now we're down to last stock. All of a sudden, that's a very scary situation because, you know, something called a Nico stock can happen at any second. This is up though going to be enough. No, not quite it here. And oh, we got the speed and auto bus going to run out, but the Buster is going to come out here. Can Nico land a hit? Yes, he does. Oh, the spot dodge though. This up though should do it here. Yep. Oh wow, quick DI, even okay. with a no shield monado as well. Going into the jump here, and yeah, Nico's got to make sure everything's safe. But <laughs> right when he wanted to get aggressive, really uh, great defensive forward air from Sweet Pea. And yeah, definitely a very crafty way of defense there, and it's going to seal out the stock. Yeah, I don't think he, well, he barely played Charizard that entire right. game. And so switching off and then being in disadvantage, I don't think Nico is ready for quite that option. That was just enough. And we're getting a quick switch afterwards. I don't know if Nico's just not feeling confident in that match. He thought he got lucky or what. But uh, we're switching to another Pokemon. Three, the, two, the other one, elemental type, Thunder. This time around. Okay, this this I have a lot of more knowledge of in terms of matchup. Uh, they are Void and Nico did face off at the ultimate tournament at ESA uh, about a couple weeks ago. Um, definitely, I, I, I do think this matchup is either even or slight advantage for Nico. Okay. It's just it's just crazy because you know Pichu is, is one of those things where Pichu lacks range, and on top of that, Pichu can die really early. These are two things that Shulk can definitely abuse. Kind of similar to like Casino, right? And as one of the things too is like those hitboxes are very wide; they go in a circular motion, so it covers a lot of the area that Pichu wants to get into. There's a couple other characters they may have like long range, but the hitboxes are thin; they're like little lines, so Pichu can easily go underneath and over just because of how small it is. Exactly. And on top of that, the Smash Monado as well. Um, whenever Shulk gets Pichu on the ledge, uh, Smash Monado art. Yeah, and here we see Nico setting up for it. The high recovery is going to get swatted out by the Nair. And he's able to come back and CT keep trying to force the issue high here. Yeah. Every time Sweet Cheat tries to go past Nico, that Nair is just ready to cover it. And that forward tilt, too much 
shield stun right there. GT tried to get something on a reversal, but it looked like Nico was ready for it. Catch them while the shield drops. Yeah, and I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think this pick was bad, but Nico did go two game five sets with Void, and Void is uh, clearly the best Pichu by a pretty far margin, I want to say. Um, so I, I do feel like. And Sweet Tea can do this, but it's going to be pretty difficult in terms of just like how, comparing the performance that he got against Void Beach. Right. Uh, if it doesn't quite work out, and it looks like Nico's already trying to start to steamroll the stocks back, trying to get that up tilt, not quite going to work. We may see Sweet Tea going back to the trainer if this does not work out. Doesn't get the last hit, but still gets the back throw, though. Not enough to take him, and Nico leaving up to uh, 199 right here. He still has Shield Monado as well. He has not been forced off the Shield Monado, so, and there, here we are with the Smash full rage. Not going to be able to get the Lich Trap, but a dash attack will get punished with the down throw. Almost loses the stock for it. Oh, um, and we'll lose the stock right there with that back air. He catches the directional air dodge, trying to make it back to the stage. Yeah, and I talked with Void about uh, getting off the ledge. As he, oh, but the Shield Monado is going to run out. Sweet going to nail that first stock on the jab lock. Yeah, no text. Easy kill confirm for Pichu, especially that quick forward smash. Just enough time to get past that jab lock range. Yeah, what a witty stall there from Nico. Going to I get punished here, and using not, no Monado art online as well. Finally going to switch to the smash. And <laughs> Pichu is, gets buried this deep. It's gonna be uh, the current here. The fourth match almost connects. And I feel like, I feel like if you're sweet team, you know, it's like for the most part just shields. You're not gonna die from grabbing that situation. So yeah, really just something. Here. Just, uh, very brave. Doesn't get clipped by that vision. Unfortunate. It was a good read from Nico, but uses that agility, makes it back, center stage. Doesn't quite get anything either though. And the air slash is just gonna basically like DP out of the situation. Yeah, and the more time that passes, the uh, the more time that. You know, Nico's Monados have to refresh. The Shield Monado is definitely up here, and the Smash Monado are definitely going to be up as well. Jump Monado, wow, even getting back onto the ground and going to go ahead and close it out with that up tilt. Very solid two stock from Nico there. Didn't even need a special art, just had jump art on, which I don't think sure doesn't affect anything there. The up beat. It affected how high the up beat. Oh, okay, yeah. But so I don't think it affected the knockback on that up no, tilt or anything. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that was just pure shulk. <laughs> Killing Pichu at a relatively <laughs> early percent there. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, right back to that Pokemon trainer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like I said, you know, I I don't think Sweet Tea cannot do it with Pichu, but it's just it, it's gonna be hard when Nico has that Pichu experience against Void underneath his belt and stuff, and he was able to go game five with last talk, last hit with him. That's yeah. very impressive. All right, here we go. Let's see what the Squirtle combo is. Gets Shield Art right, just to be able to fast fall enough to get out of that combo a little bit earlier, not get juggled as much. Right, but like I said, I, it's really good that he's not getting reversed. With a lot of characters, they'll go for their bread and butter, and um, you know the Shield Art will come out, and then he, you know, Shulk will start getting his bread and butters, or just like turn the new, um, turn that around, and that's not happening with Squirtle, which is really great. Yep. Charges up the water gun while in the middle of that combo too. Very safe way to be able to get that pushback just in case something goes wrong. Still on the chase, finally goes to the Ivysaur. I was wondering, I was like thinking, okay, he goes at a pretty high percent. Usually you want to switch the Ivysaur around this area. And there he's doing just that, but he clipped at the ledge. Oh, I like the back air, the backslash. Not gonna get punished again. And I feel like that's one thing that uh, Sweet Tea is dropping a lot is these uh, punishes on up B and then it's a lot of damage. Could be potential stocks as well. Yep. Just not quite catching the drift or trying to intercept him in the air. Neither of them quite working out. It looks like the hitbox is just one quite working out. Ooh, and the Razor Leaf gets carried. Ain't gonna get reversal. Not gonna get that air slash. That's a re-grab. That's gonna be a downer. But really good stuff coming out from Sweet Tea. And it was looking pretty grim. I mean, Nico was not giving him a lot of room to operate there, but finally gonna come back and the switch into Charizard here. We are at 127%, so I like it. You're gonna bring out the tank of the team. Oh, Ooh, the God. call out though, yo. You got the flaps, but I got the jumps. Yo, he went so fly, so high on that. It looked like Shulk was a flying type Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> like, for real, man. Like that was what an incredible read. And I mean, it, it's pretty insane because I, I don't think that the uh, jump auto art. Um, like up throw 50 50 is really a thing anymore, especially with directional air dodge. Right. So you don't really see Jump Monado do too much in terms of just mainly like getting off the ledge or recovering, but that was an offensive use of Jump Art, and I really like it from Yeah, Nico. trying to go too high and work out of it. Withdraw, gonna get punished right there. Oh, but the Nair chase down, and this can get really scary with like, you know, covering in air dodges or when it sends you in that tech chase situation, that's when Nico can really start getting things going. Right. Second 
platform. Ooh, uses that dare in the white hitbox to make himself back down, but tries to use Fly to come back, and that's going to be a free force match. Oh, wow, sneaking underneath the flamethrower. The flare blitz will connect on him with the Smash Not Art as well. That is going to be your stock wow. in, like, the tenfold. <laughs> yeah, that... that Flare Blitz seems to last so long, just getting caught him on normal getup. So yeah. There's only one frame of vulnerability when you get up with the shield. So, he must have caught all of that. Yeah, like you said, that lingering hitbox is very, very strong. So again, Ivy Sword being so strong um, with that ledge drop finally. Not going to get punished too often. The forward smash is going to do it here for Nico and an ill advised Bullet Siege. Yeah, I don't know if that was a misinput try to vine whip, or sometimes you can use bullet seed to pick them up as yeah, they're coming air. down. Yeah, but I don't know that situation looked like a kind of a miscalculation there. I like to switch to Ivysaur here, especially with being on the ledge. Oh, but he gets the spot dodge. This is going to be big damage for Nico. Already 71%. Oh, the parry as well. Ooh, man, both players going back and forth. Yeah, but 71% already catching up real quick. Gets that grab. Put him at the ledge. Smash art is on. Gets the back air. That's going to be the stock. Nico mm -hmm. taking the third mm -hmm. game right there. Yeah, that was so, so well spaced. <laughs> and it, it's crazy because back air, it's just a move with so much startup but insane amount of range. But because the move had so much startup and the way Nico timed that, it really just covered that whole area of the ledge area. And since he drifted back so far, it covered that, you know, air dodge into the stage. And that it, it, that's when uh, I feel like he just really had a feel. Sweet Tea was in a really bad position and just wanted out. He wanted that center stage control. Nico sniffed that out and was able to seal it out now up 2-1 here against Sweet Tea. Yeah, running it back to Pokemon Stadium over and over again. Jacob does not think it's the stage. It's just him. Yeah. Oh, man. This, this is, I feel like as the set progresses, it could possibly get a little harder because I, I especially like this early, like uh, uh, against the Squirtle, I feel like game one, the Squirtle came out so, so strong. And then game um, the last game, like, I just feel like Nico is playing so much better against the Squirtle. Right. Oh, that time trying to get the reversal, but Squirtle's a little bit too quick. He's able to get that fair out before uh, Nico trying to get something started. I like the safe pressure coming out from Sweet Tea, especially on the platform as well. And opting to stick with the Squirtle, even though he's already got 90% here. Water Gun, oh, of course, going to switch to the Ivy Sword. Wow, and another quick switch into the Charizard here. I, I, very interesting because he's only at 91. Choke a little on the heavier side. Yeah, and the thing about having Charizard like that out when you're you're at like lower percent, Charizard is very combo heavy. Yeah. There is a little bit of vulnerability at the end of that uh, Pokemon switch, so you can't catch people after the first 25 frames of his vulnerability. Do you know how much? How much? I don't know how much. I just but know there's a I, tad I, I know bit. There's like, like, I know there's like one. I know there's 25 frames in the beginning, starting on frame one of the move. Right, right. The switch, but I don't know afterwards. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah, I was able to catch that with the air slide, nice stuff. Yeah, very, uh, very uh, not easy to time, uh, let me tell you that. But the up air will close it out here for Sweet Tea and very standard stuff here. Um, and, and that's the strongest thing about Ivysaur. I honestly want to say that down air and that up air, very, very powerful tools for closing out those songs. Tries to space out with his own swords, those little tentacle vine whips there. Not quite working out though, but gets in there to make it back to stage. Ivysaur's in there is so, so good. Down there. Oh, caught you sleeping, and I believe he caught the jump out of there, and wow, what a read from Nico. And, uh, I, I didn't expect that, so no surprise that uh, Sweet Tea not going to expect that option there. And like, just think about, like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm in this position. Let me jump. I shouldn't die, right? Like, yeah, It's just basically a way for him to cover like two places at once. Like, exactly. you're going to be above me, or you're going to be right in front of me. Either way, I'm going to catch you. And right now, Nico has the lead. Taking his time with this speed mana art. Gonna go right into the jump art. Man, it's just so scary with the jump art as well. You can really chase down on some of these juggles, but the up air pressure, wow. Yep. Alrighty, 34% on Sweet Tea. Nico has a little bit of room to work with, but there's nothing that an ID Store, Squirtle, or any kind of combo can't make up right here. Trying to make it started here. With the Ivy Store combo gets that Nair. It brings it back to even at least. Yeah, these nairs and back are spacing really, really well here for CT. Not too many out of shield options for Nico, especially if spaced correctly. Beautiful cross up coming out from Sweet T, faking him out. Oh, that nair lasts a little bit too long. Just catch him at the end of it. Okay, gonna go into the jump art here. 
see what he's going to use it for the offensive capabilities, the up throw, up tilt. It is going to get switched on. Okay, uses that extra movement from the jump arc just to be able to get that back air. Now oh, Squirtle's man. at the edge with the smash uh, arc. Looking a little bit scary, but goes for the core smash. Doesn't quite work out there. And he uses the water gun just to keep Nico off stage a little bit more. He gives enough time to switch the Ivysaur. Tries to get that there. That's definitely the mo one of the most common like offensive switch options that I've seen, um, you know, progressing in Pokemon Trainer meta. You have the Squirtle shoot at the Water Gun. Water Gun a very, very good flood to get them off stage, and then you switch right into the Ivysaur, try to get that two frame or just recovery in general with that down. Oh, just got caught at the ledge there. You got sliced. And that's